is an old saying that offense wins games, but defense wins championships. And that makes sense because 74% of all Defensive Player of the Year winners are also champions. This award has been around since 1983, and as of this upload, there have been 23 different players that won the award. So we are going to rank every Defensive Player of the Year from worst to best. Now before we start the ranking, I do want to make it clear that we are only ranking these players based off of defensive ability. I don't care how good of a scorer you are for this ranking, it's all about blocks, rebounds, steals, and contested shots. Also, this isn't a best defenders in general list, it's the best defensive player of the year defenders. There are many great defensive legends who never won the award, so they wouldn't show up on this list. Just keep that in mind while we go through the ranking. Without further ado, let's rebound onto that list. In 23rd place, we have Tyson Chandler. Tyson won the award in 2012 while playing for the New York Knicks. The reason why Tyson ranks so low is not because he's a bad defender, but because there's just so much competition going forward. Also, it is worth noting that he is one of the only designated 7-foot centers on this list that never averaged over 2 blocks per game. And when he won the award in 2012, he couldn't crack double-digit rebounds or single-digit steals. In 22nd place is Marcus all. Mark is a great defender. He won the award in 2013 while playing on the Grizzlies. Mark is in a similar boat as Tyson Chandler. He's a 6'11 designated center who never averaged over 2 blocks per game or double digit rebounds. He also averaged quite a bit of fouls, about 3 per game. I have him slightly ahead of Tyson because Mark averaged twice as many steals per game, which for a center is pretty impressive. At 21st place ranks Draymond Green. Like Tyson and Mark, Draymond is an elite defender, but there's just just too much competition going forward. And he is a frontcourt player who, even while playing center in the small ball death lineup in 2014 through 2016, couldn't manage to crack double digit rebounds, and overall averages 6.8 rebounds. He averages 1 block and 1.4 steals per game. Also, usually Clay Thompson was the one tasked with guarding the opposing team's best scorer. In 20th place, we have Meta World Peace. Meta's defense is so good, you could say it's a bit offensive, no pun intended. Meta won the the award in 2004 while playing for the Pacers, and he is a four-time All-Defensive player. For a small forward, he had some great defensive strides, but only averaged about three defensive rebounds throughout his career, which is slightly below average compared to other forwards on this list. In 19th place, we have Joakim Noah. Noah won the award in 2014 while playing with the Bulls. He is a three-time All-Defensive player who probably was about to make big strides had he not ran into injury troubles. And if that Bulls team could have stayed as a unit and be healthy overall, all, who knows what the outcome would have been. He won Defensive Player of the Year in 2014, but I would argue he had a better defensive season in 2013, as he averaged more blocks, steals, and about the same number of rebounds. Ranking in 18th place is Marcus Camby. Camby made an all-defensive team four times, led the NBA in block shots four times, and won the Defensive Player of the Year award in 2007 while playing on the Nuggets. I have him this high because of his defensive win shares. While this is more of a longevity stat, it is worth noting that Camby ranked ahead of Dennis Rodman, Kobe, and Gary Payton in all-time defensive win shares. Now if that's the case, why is he relatively low though? You can have a lot of regular season win shares, but when your defense matters in the postseason, Camby never made deep playoff runs except in his early years when he was a rotation player on the Knicks. Coming in at 17th place is Michael Cooper. Michael was an important piece to the Showtime Lakers puzzle that helped them win five championships. He usually came off the bench for most of his career, but he is an 8-time All-Defensive Player and one Defensive Player of the Year in 1987. Cooper is an elite defender, and a lot of his efforts don't show up on the stat sheet. If you just look at his stats, you would not think too much about him as a player, who averages a half a block, one steal, and three rebounds per game. With that in mind, as a smaller role player, it's hard to compare him to defenders on this list who are centerpieces for their teams, which is why he is towards the bottom half of this list. Ranking in at 16th place, we have Rudy Gobert. Rudy is a two-time Defensive Player of the year and a four-time all-defensive player so far as of this upload. The main reason why he ranks in the bottom half is that going forward the competition gets really tough and he does have a lot of potential to end up higher on this list in the future, maybe even the near future. If Rudy was able to defend his team into deeper playoff runs, he would have ranked higher on this list. Coming in 15th place is Alvin Robertson. Alvin won defensive player of the year in 1986 when he was just in his second season playing for the Spurs. Alvin is a six-time all-defensive player and he 
led the league in steals three times, nearly averaging four steals in his best season. He easily averaged over three steals per game during his prime, plus keep in mind he is a 6'3 guard averaging nearly seven rebounds per game in his best seasons. If Alvin had deeper playoff runs, he would easily have been ranked higher. In 14th place, we have the Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo. If this list factored offense, Giannis would easily be much higher. And coming right in the near middle of this list with defensive legends is still really good. Plus, he's got a lot to prove going forward. He could easily end up higher by the time his career ends. Giannis won Defensive Player of the Year in the 2019-2020 season. As of this upload, he is only 26 years old. And I think in a few years or maybe even sooner, he will end up much higher on this list. Landing in 13th place is Mark Eaton. Mark is the tallest player on this list, standing at a towering 7'4". He won Defensive Player of the Year twice, once in 1985 and 1989. He is a five-time All-Defensive Player and a four-time block champ. He once averaged an absurd 5.6 blocks per game. He actually leads the league in all-time average blocks per game at 3.5 per game. Now, with a stat like that, you'd actually be wondering why I didn't rank him higher. And the main reason why I have him around the middle of the pack is that he's kind of a one-dimensional defender. He's a legendary rim protector and blocker, but that's about it. He's a below-average defensive rebounder, only averaging about 5.8 per game. One of the tallest to ever do it, you averaging single-digit rebounds. I think you understand why he ranks where he ranks. In 12th place, we have Sidney Moncrief. Sidney won back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Year awards in 1983 and 1984. This five-time All-Star is also a five-time All-Defensive player who was an elite perimeter defender and on-ball defender. Even though he was 6'3", he can easily guard forwards and backcourt players. Sidney's defense doesn't really show up on the stat sheet. He only averages about a steal per game and three defensive rebounds. But to quote the GOAT MJ, Jordan himself stated, When you play against Moncrief, you're in for a night of all-around basketball. He'll hound you everywhere you go, both ends of the court. You just expect it. Coming in 11th place is Alonzo Mourning. Zo is a two-time Defensive Player of the Year, two-time All-Defensive Player, and two-time Block Champ. He won Defensive Player of the Year both in 1999 and 2000. In his best blocking season, he averaged nearly four blocks per game. He was the best defender on a Heat team that went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, losing only to MJ. He ended up winning a ring later in his career as a rotation player with Wade and Shaq. Not only is he 11th on my list, he also ranks 11th all-time in total blocks, with 2,356 blocks. And now for the top 10. In 10th place, we have The Claw, Kawhi Leonard. So far, Kawhi has two Defensive Player of the Year awards. He has won them in 2015 and 2016. Leonard is a six-time All-Defensive Player and a Steals Champion, leading the league in steals in 2015 with 2.3 per game. Kawhi is usually tasked with guarding the opposing team's best scorer. He can easily guard positions one through four. He's had success limiting elite scores in the finals like LeBron James and Kevin Durant, earning rings and finals MVPs against both of them, thanks to his elite defense. In ninth place ranks one of the best defensive guards of all time, Gary Payton. Gary won Defensive Player of the Year in 1996. He is a nine-time All-Defensive Player and led the league in steals in 96, averaging nearly three steals per game. He is in the top five all-time steals leader at fourth with 2,445 total steals. He can easily guard positions one through three and was a true defensive force. He is the highest ranked point guard on this list, and he got his nickname the Glove due to his elite defense. The competition going forward is insane. I would have ranked Gary higher had his defense helped him win at all during his prime. He did win a ring playing a veteran role with the Heat late in his career with Dwayne Wade. Coming in eighth place, we have prime Dwight Howard. Howard won three Defensive Player of the Year awards in 2009, 2010, and 2011 while playing with the Magic. Howard's overall career is rocky due to injuries, but during his prime before his major back injury, he was a defensive nightmare in Orlando. He is a five-time All-Defensive player, two-time block champ, averaging nearly three blocks per game in his best blocking seasons, and a five-time total rebounding champ, averaging an absurd 14.5 rebounds per game in his best rebounding season. During his prime, Howard was able to guard both opposing centers and forwards, beating a near-prime or start-of-his-prime LeBron James in 2009. I would have ranked Howard higher on this list if the next players on this list weren't also defensive legends. In seventh place, we have the GOAT, Michael Jordan. MJ is the GOAT mainly thanks to both his offense and defense, but defensive alone, I don't think he was even the best defender on his team, let alone the best defender of all time. With that in mind, he is the highest ranking shooting guard and highest ranking guard on this list, and his defense is indeed legendary.
Legendary. MJ won Defensive Player of the Year in 1988. He is also a 9-time All-Defensive Player and 3-time Steals Champ. He averaged 3.2 steals per game in his best stealing season and nearly 3 steals per game throughout his prime. He also ranks 3rd all-time in steals with 2,514 total steals. If Jordan was tasked with guarding the opposing team's best scorer, as opposed to Scotty or Dennis, I probably would have ranked him higher, and a lot of times Jordan did have that task with that role, especially if the opposing team's best scorer was a guard. But Jordan was in a system where his main priority was to score and let Scotty and Dennis be the main defensive anchors. Ranking in 6th place, we have the big ticket, Kevin Garnett. KG is a defensive monster. He is a 12-time All-Defensive Player who won Defensive Player of the Year in 2008. This is the same year he won a ring, and he was easily the best defender on that championship team, beating some extremely tough offensive competition. KG is one of the only players on this list who can guard all five positions. Let's not forget he played small forward during his early career and played power forward and center throughout his prime. One of the most impressive defensive feats KG has accomplished was winning four total rebounding champs four years in a row from 2004 through 2007, averaging nearly an insane 14 rebounds per game in his best rebounding season. Garnett was tasked with guarding the opposing team's best score many times, and he's had great success doing so. In fifth place, we have Big Ben, Ben Wallace. Ben is tied with the most defensive player of the year awards of all time. He has four of them, winning them in 2002, 2003, 2005, and 2006. Ben is a six-time all-defensive player, two-time total rebounding champ, Champ and a block champion. In his best rebounding season, he averaged 15.4 rebounds per game and over 3.5 blocks per game in his best blocking season. Keep in mind he is an undersized center blocking shots from the league's best scoring centers, forwards, and guards. In fourth place, we have yet another player who is tied with the most all-time awards, at four of them, and that is Dikimi Mutombo. Dikimi Mutombo won the Defensive Player of the Year award in 1995, 1997, 1998, and 2001. Mutombo is a six-time all-defensive player, two-time rebounding champ and three-time block champ. He ranks second all-time in block shots with a total of 3,289 blocks. He averaged an insane 4.5 blocks per game in his best blocking season and over 14 rebounds per game in his best rebounding season. Ranking in third place, we have the Admiral, David Robinson. Robinson won Defensive Player of the Year in 1992. He's an eight-time all-defensive player, a total rebounding champ, and a block champion. He averaged 4.5 blocks per game in his best blocking season and 13 rebounds per game in his best rebounding rebounding season. Robinson is one of the fastest and strongest centers of his era. His sheer speed and agility were unmatched for most of his career. His defense was able to help the Spurs win two rings, and he ranks sixth all-time in blocks with 2,954 total blocks. Only two other players on this list have more defensive win shares than David Robinson. Robinson has over 80 defensive win shares and ranks in the top 10 all-time. In second place, we have the worm, Dennis Rodman. Rodman won Defensive Player of the Year twice, once in 1990 and once in 1991. He is a seven-time total rebounding champ and eight-time all-defensive player. He's also a five-time champ in general. His defense helped both the Pistons and Bulls win it all. Rodman was a total rebounding champ for seven seasons in a row, from 1992 through 1998, averaging nearly 19 rebounds in his best rebounding season. These are video game numbers in any era, but this was the 90s. It's truly unfathomable. Rebounding stats like these, you would think he was playing in the 50s, but he was putting close to 20 rebounds per game in the 90s. Rodman is a rebounding monster, and if the next player on this list wasn't one of the greatest defensive centers ever, he probably would have took first place. Landing in first place is Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon. Hakeem Olajuwon won Defensive Player of the Year twice, once in 1993 and once in 1994. He's also a three-time blocks champ, nine-time all-defensive player, and two-time total rebounding champ. He averaged 4.6 blocks per game in his best blocking season, and 14 rebounds per game in his best rebounding season, which was that same season in 1990. Hakeem Olajuwon has the most defensive win shares on this list with 94.47 win shares. He also leads the league in total block shots at 3,830. In second place on that total list is Dikimi Mutombo who is about 600 blocks behind, which is light years in terms of blocks. These are blocks, not points. That gap is crazy. Thanks to his defense, Hakeem is a two-time back-to-back champ, beating elite centers like Shaq and Patrick Ewing in the finals. The Dream had the best defensive rating in the NBA for five consecutive years. So these are every Defensive Player of the Year winner ranked from worst to best or 
least best to best, since these are all legendary defenders. Let me know what you think of this list, also let me know if you want me to rank the top 25 defenders in general, since there are some great defenders like Scottie Pippen and Tim Duncan who never won the award but are great defenders nonetheless. Don't forget to dunk on that like button and subscribe with notifications turned on. I'm Rebound Rewind, and I'll fast forward to you later.